bag right here. That's the first of many. Holy shit! That's awesome. Thank you guys. That was the best car I've ever driven. Oh, you are the man! Can you believe it? That was the best car I've ever driven in Hey, this place is my track, man. Me and David, we got this place figured out. Burn her down, man. Burn her down. What's up, guys? Cole Custer here. Obviously not Ryan Blaney. He could not make it to the show this week. So I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm going to hand it off to my co-hosts, and they can take it from here. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good yeah. little intro there, Cole. That was good. Yeah. I, I tried my best. I mean, you guys left me with a tall task, but yeah. I tried my best. Hey, I mean, if Blaney can do it, then anybody can do it. Very true. Well, no, welcome back. Uh, you have been on the show before. So, yeah, I've uh, been here before. I loved it so much that, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to be back. So I don't have mis mixed emotions about it. I'm, I'm excited. But uh, I don't know. I mean, you guys always keep it fun on here. We try you to. You haven't been on since you are now a Cup Series winner, though. Yeah, that, that's, that's hard to think about. <laughs> but, uh, Crazy. Cool. Thank you for mentioning it. Making me feel special. You should. Hey, man. You get, Sorry. like, that was... Like the the only I mean, the only drawback to your first cup win is that it was during a pandemic and you couldn't celebrate with the passion that I know you have for that win. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's tough because I mean, you want to go out and party and do whatever with your guys and all your friends, but you kind of have to keep it small just with everything going on. So it was kind of a it was it was cool. We we enjoyed it, but also a little bit of a letdown. But it was uh, something you'll never forget the rest of your life, for sure. So, I mean, I got to ask, where, where are the beers? Like, uh, ah. I know there was a whole, uh, whole like, pallet almost. Truckload. Truckload. Yeah, so there, there was the pallet. We split that up between the teams. So, yeah. between the team guys and everybody, you know, at SHR. So, from what happened to the beers after that, I have no idea. I'm sure that <laughs> from what I know about our Guardian guys, that they're all gone. Um, and then I also got some sent to me that are 25 ounces, the, the big, the big guys. So, wow. Those are, those are gone too now. So Tall boys. So wait, there's, there's no beer left from July. From, from my sources. I don't think there's any. Okay. Left. All right, all right. <laughs> it's good. I, that is the answer that I That's was hoping good. for. I mean, I, if you had some left, I'd be like, Oh man. Like, yeah, I think we, we deleted all of them. Yes. Good job. Hell yeah. Well, um, I mean, that, that's, that's a big thing, though. Like, first rear, first rear, first year in the Cup Series and to get that win, man, that – hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just – it takes so much stress off, honestly, is the biggest thing. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, as a rookie, you're trying to figure things out as fast as you can, and things are so much different, and you're trying to understand the cars, and you don't have practice anymore. So you're just kind of – you're trying to figure it out and adapt as fast as you can. But to get that win, just – it takes a lot of stress off that, you know, you can do it, and you're going to figure it out eventually. You also have at Stuart Haas a guy who has now won nine races. Oh God! And in your rookie season, to be you know, even if they're Zoom meetings, but in the team meetings, like talking to those guys on your team, like what's that been like to sort of just say, listen to Kevin, or kind of ask questions of Kevin, like because I mean he's having a, a historic year right now. Yeah, I mean I think the best part about it is just that he can really give you a sense of direction of where we need to be thinking, what our mindset needs to be. And, uh, you know, cause he knows, I mean, he's been doing it forever and he's obviously won nine races this year. So he knows what he's looking for and he knows what's a little bit off in our cars, what's really good. So he knows how to give us a really good sense of direction that I might not have yet since I'm only, you know, 20 races deep or so. So it's, uh, it's definitely been a big help. I mean, I think I've talked to him almost every single weekend before the race, trying to get an idea of what he's looking for and things like that. So he's definitely, I mean, all my teammates have been huge helps this year. All I can think of when I think about him winning is that Ferris Bueller part where he's like nine times, not, it's going to get lost on everyone. Not everyone. The Sausage. principal is talking about his absentees yeah. and he's like nine times. Yeah, he's the Sausage King of Chicago. That's. Have you seen that movie, Cole? Do you have I've, you seen? I've seen it? I okay. can't remember. I can't remember this part you're talking about, honestly. I know. I remember the most minutia, like weird parts of movies. But I mean, that's got like. I'm just glad that you saw it. Like, even if it's not at the quotable level, like it's good that you have at least seen it. Yeah, I'm a movie lover. I've I've probably seen you know most of the movies out there that you know are pretty legendary, you know, classic movies. So I. I I know what you're talking about most of the time. 
what what's your go-to like quotable movie uh probably Step Brothers. okay oh Brothers yeah it's a good one Actually, i watched hall pass last night that that thing was funny that that was one of the best movies i've ever seen it's been a while since i've seen that one but i do remember it being funny <laughs> who's in that one? Sense, but it was funny uh in like jennifer Ant- no who is in that hall uh, pass owen wilson uh yes is jason sudeikis in it yeah yes. jason sudeikis like they're married their wives give them the uh opportunity to go out and have go a ahead. hall pass um, which uh, not a lot of people know that term i've used that term before and people are like hall pass what is that which i thought that was like a, a well-known term yeah i, I have no idea honestly <laughs> <laughs> it was a funny movie i I've, I've definitely heard the term like you're saying but it was a. Uh, it's funny how strange it was and how everything works out, but I don't know. Those two guys that moved yeah. were pretty funny. Like the kids, well, I mean, now, like you can't, you know, and in, in elementary school, because everything's virtual, you don't have to get a hall pass to go to the bathroom. But like we used to have in an elementary school, little like a brick or something that the teacher would hand you that was your hall pass to be out the, in the halls during class. So, oh, yeah. Um, it depends on the teacher. It depends on the teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of Jason Sudeikis, though, have you guys seen the new show that he's in on Apple TV, Coach Lasso? No, uh, I haven't no. seen it. So it's a couple of years ago when NBC Sports got the Premier League, the English Premier League in soccer. They did a sort of advertising campaign with Jason Sudeikis where he played an American football coach who went to go coach Tottenham Hotspur in the English Premier okay. League. Um, and they did this whole like campaign on it. And character was funny you know fish out of water type thing well they've made a tv show about it it sounds like it would not be good because you're taking an ad and then making it a tv show yeah it sounds kind of weird i gotta tell you i'm here for it it is the comedy that we all need right now because it's (laughs) it's it it makes you feel good it just makes you feel good honestly i think jason sudeikis is honestly kind of underrated as a comedian actor I mean, I think any movie that he's in, I mean, we're the Millers. I mean, I think. Oh, we are the Millers is good. So I mean, we're the bosses. It's not like the person you think of, you know, right when you say comedian, you know, actor. But I feel like any movie he's in, he's awesome. And that's like, that's the way that Ted Lasso show was. It's surprising. Like, I thought it was going to be stupid. And I watched it just like, I'll see how bad this is. And then the first episode was like, holy shit, this is like, they're tugging at the heartstrings. They're making you laugh. It's a roller coaster of emotion. Hmm. Yeah. Have we talked about Letter Kenny? Great show. It, it, I don't think a lot of people know about it. Another Canadian show. I'm watching all the Canadian shows. Those Canadians, those Canucks, they do a good job. Welcome to Canada. Welcome to Canada. Uh, the pace of that show, though, is what makes it so good. Like the pace of the uh, dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen any of uh, Letter Kenny there, uh, Cole? I haven't. I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, you're Tim Ply, bud. Yeah. yeah, Peter Patter, get out. You know, Peter Patter, let's get at her. <laughs> it's a, like just for the little like they, they cuss people out, and the way that they do it is uh, it's an art form. Yeah, um, and like I, like I don't even know how to describe it. It's like I haven't watched that many episodes. Yeah, but it I don't. It's it's interesting. There, there's a character that randomly throws s's at the end of sentences, so it's uh, I, I can't even like the Chick Fil A's are now trying to put out the pimentos cheeses. <laughs> and he just like constantly throws S's on there and you'd, yeah. you'd get annoying, but it's kind of funny after a while. So is this on Apple TV or what's this on? It's on Hulu, I think yeah. right now. Okay. I believe. So it. like we've already got like an Apple TV, then a Hulu. And then when do you think they're going to all just merge together? I know the novelty of it. Who would apparently Apple TV, you can now combine all of the apps into the thing with the new iOS. Everything comes full circle. Get rid of cable, then the bundles basically what cable was. Mm-hmm. What'd you say, Cole? You still have to pay for all of them though if you do put them yeah. on. Yeah. 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 I would think eventually it's all just become one. Well know. then it's 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 like a cycle because then it goes back to the cable company. <laughs> yeah. So, they, they're always gonna get us. Yeah. <laughs> we think we have the independence from it now because we're paying for it over here and over here and over here, but we're oh, probably no. ended up paying more yeah. <laughs> than we did. <laughs> When it was all one cable. And you gotta log into all the separate ones. It's and there's nothing to watch, right? We need to go back to Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, but I do. Yes. I watched the uh, Social Dilemma. 
Oh, that was awesome. I watched that too. That was terrifying. <laughs> it was crazy. What well, was your what was your takeaway from it, Cole? Well, I thought like one of the cool lines from it was that we've gone from like a tools based society to like a manipulation and attention based society with our tools. So it's like social media and your phone is always trying to distract you and manipulate you. It's not trying to just be a tool for you. Even though you know that's happening, you still get yeah. caught up in it at times. Oh yeah. I mean, obviously social media has been like a great part for our lives and it's bring, bring people together, you know, made, you know, sports more, you know, we can talk to fans more, but at the same time, I mean, there's definitely things that are like pretty scary about it, you know, that you can think about. It's like any technology is great. Like when it first comes out, it's great. It's just, you have to be wary of what it can do and how it can harm. Um, although I think there was a line in that where they, was it like the train or like some, something it's like when when the train came out like the technology didn't expand exponentially like yeah. it has with mm-hmm. phones so technology. yeah the uh dramatizations did you recognize anybody pete campbell from mad men is that was that the kid no that was the guy that had like where it was like multiple guys, almost like. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the girl took me forever. I was like, where is she from? The like teenage girl? She's the young girl in Moonrise Kingdom. Oh, yeah. The That's kid. lost on you, probably, Cole. I'm a Wes Anderson fan. Okay. The ki- anyway. The kid is from uh, Righteous Gemstones, which if you haven't watched that, Danny McBride, great show on HBO, where it's Danny McBride, um, John Goodman, they play Southern uh, televangelists, basically. Oh. Kind of like uh, Tammy Faye and Jimmy, uh, Jim Baker, those guys. Got it. So, it's hilarious. They filmed it down in South Carolina. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, I ran into, which I think I said uh, last year on the podcast, um, is it Danny Masterson is his real name? That's in that? No. Danny McBride? Or McBride, I mean McBride. Yeah, That's yeah, Danny Masterson. Name, right? Let's. We don't want to get into the Danny Masterson stuff. On yeah, that was, that was the wrong. <laughs> Round Danny, Danny McBride, Eastbound and Down. Yeah, Danny McBride. I don't know yeah. why I said I, Masterson. Yeah, I saw him at the Speed's place in Sullivan's Island, so it makes sense because if he was down there filming that. Well, I also think he moved down there. Like oh, really? he moved his family down there. Yeah, mm-hmm. he went to school here in North Carolina. He went to North Carolina School of the Arts. He's a North Carolina guy. Speaking of North Carolina things, Chick-fil-A, I mentioned it when I threw the S's in there. Did you notice that uh, they're trying to, to creep in on Bojangles' pimento cheese game? Uh, I, don't, <laughs> you, I don't know about that. <laughs> you look like you have a strong opinion on that, Cole. Is, is, I've never tried Bojangles' pimento cheese. Is it good? It's good. Kim, Kim's like, meh. She, I don't think she's had it's it. It's too much. I don't think anybody should put pimento cheese on a chicken sandwich. Well, I just don't trust it. I mean – I, I feel like it can go terrible. It can go good or just terribly wrong. I don't I think, think I don't think it's something that I really need in my life either. Exactly. <laughs> it's not something I asked for. No. You didn't ask for this. <laughs> you didn't ask for it, but you need it. I'm telling you, you need it. I think it well, is. Well, I like pimento cheese chilled, and so when you put it on a hot chicken yeah. sandwich, it gets warm. Yeah, I think it'd be nasty warm. Have nasty you tried it, Kim? Warm. Have you tried it, Kim? I've had a bite of the Bojangles one. Okay, okay, okay. At least you've had a bite. I, I got to say, like, it's a good hangover cure. <laughs> what? That's it like is. The opposite. That's like the, the exact opposite of what I would want. Why? Because it makes you vomit? No, it doesn't make me vomit. I think Get it, everything it's, out? It's soothing. You when you wake up from a hangover, you're like, I'm just craving a pimento cheese chicken sandwich. Mainly, I'm craving a... Cajun filet biscuit from yes. Bojangles. Mm-hmm. The pimento cheese is an added bonus. Generally, like I'll throw some egg and just the sliced cheese, but when they have the pimento cheese, I will throw the egg and pimento cheese on there and just pow. Oh. Just risk it makes me nauseous to think about. <laughs> hey, I, I like to live dangerously. You know, it's yeah. a fine line. Cracker Barrel. Another place you could go after a hangover, you can now nurse the hangover a little bit at the Cracker Barrel. Yes, you can. So, microphones or like a brunch kind of deal, or what are they? I think they tested it out where they were doing like brunch and mimosa type stuff, but I think now they're throwing full on beer and wine. Um, They tested it out at the beginning, like in April or May, I think, Mm -hmm. 
and now they're like, this worked, so we're going to go full full bore with it. So brunching at the barrel. When that's I saw that, it took me a second to be like, oh, that's right. Cracker Road didn't serve alcohol before. I don't know. That's something I really noticed. That's not what I think about when I guess when I go to Cracker No. I think about I, sitting in rocking chairs and playing checkers. And a country store. Buying a Conway Twitty album, you know? And the little game with the diff, like the triangle. Okay. And the, <laughs> I'm, how many have you left? Uh, I'm usually like a, a three or a four kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> it popped up on my Facebook memories uh, a couple weeks ago. Memorial Day weekend. Um, Labor Day weekend. Not Memorial. That was back in May. Labor Day. I was coming back from Atlanta when the Atlanta race was that weekend. And I took a photo and I guess posted it on Facebook of leaving one in the little mm-hmm. thing. It was like, I'm on fire this weekend. It was a good weekend. I think I've gotten two is the best I've ever gotten. Are you like um, looking at seat codes um, on, 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 online? Or? No, I just sit there and do it a couple of times. And there's a pattern to it. Like yeah. you have to do it the right way. You got to figure out, do you start in the corners? Do you start in the middle? Yeah. Well, the, every yeah. single time I feel like I figure it out, it, I, I can't remember the next yeah. time I go to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Rubik's Cube. You can't ever remember. There's a I code. I have not solved a Rubik's Cube. I haven't either. I don't even try. You ever like take the stickers off and just put them back in order and be like, see, I did it. That's the cheat code for the Rubik's Cube. Jesus. <laughs> well, okay. All right. Speaking of cheat codes, like video games. Cole, you play any video games? You, you're a big video game guy. I used to, you know, yeah. like NASCAR Thunder, you know. Did you ever hit the cheat codes on there? Oh, yeah. I yeah. used to be able to put the cheat code in where you could, like, drive the UPS truck around the track. It was awesome. <laughs> Kim, you seem awesome. shocked. That was, like, the, like, that was the Wait, is that a real? Is, it, is that a real thing that could happen? Uh, are you, yeah, are you I mean, messing with me? No, I, I'm, I'm totally being serious. There was a cheat code in, like, NASCAR 2004 or 5. You could put a cheat code in, and Dale Jarrett was driving around the UPS truck. Mm-hmm. That's There's- crazy. If I was a video game coder, I would just, like, put all these, like, every Easter egg in a game. Just people can see if they can figure it out. (laughs) I don't really play video games any that often, but. I use my Xbox more for, like, Netflix and stuff like that. It's kind of Yeah. Yeah, life life changes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Shocking that life changes. Shocker. Yeah. Speaking of shocking things, uh, I sent another article out there's a wisconsin careful man there. There. huh careful there wait, wait. you're like speaking of shocking things i sent a photo no um a wisconsin man was shocked to discover a brain had washed up on the beach outside oh. of i think it was racine wisconsin did you uh it was wrapped they, in tinfoil they included a photo too which was yeah. disgusting well i don't know why i know about that honestly <laughs> i didn't want to know about <laughs> well, it it wasn't. It was not a human brain. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's just like clickbait, then. Right. Right. Well, yeah. but it's, it was still wrapped in tin foil and washed up on the beach. So it's, and it's it kind of cool. looks like it could have been a human brain. Yeah. They uh they haven't said uh, what type of animal it came from, according to uh, WDJT. So. I'd be more curious, like where it came from, like how far it floated in the ocean. <laughs> well, it's sink. They float. It's a good question. I, I feel like it would it would float. I mean, human bodies are generally pretty buoyant. Like... <laughs> Why are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you've been in a pool, right? I usually sink. Yeah, I think I usually sink. <laughs> yeah, I float. <laughs> I just gotta lay back and float. You can just you know. I can float. I'm just not the best floater. <laughs> I feel like my legs always end up like going. Like down towards the bottom. Sucks. The guy was trying to find beach glass and he found that instead. <laughs> like I'm reading, I'm reading the article. Uh, yeah. St- they don't know where it came from though. Surprise. Not- I-, I feel like, th- I feel like there should be more of an update on this, but there's not. You would think. You would this think. Would breaking news, but I guess not. <laughs> not so- <laughs> nah, man, we got wildfires. We got hurricane beta coming up down. It's not a hurricane. So yeah, about the brain finder. Yeah, yeah. Beta. I didn't realize that once you get through the whole alphabet, then they start using the Greek alpha yeah. beta 
gamma, delta, zeta, eta, theta. I can't, yeah. I sorry. I, I could, I used to have to, I used to know all of the Greek alphabet, sadly. Really? Mm-hmm. How does that, what, how do you get into something? How does that, how does that help you? <laughs> it doesn't. It really doesn't. But uh, that's the thing about the, the whole frat life is like, learn the Greek alphabet. Why? Because I said so. Did you have to do that as part of Rush? Yeah. That was more of the whole, like, pledge process. Oh, pledging. Yeah. Mm. You were one of those guys. Those guys. Yeah, I was. I also went to a small school in the mountains where there was nothing else to do. Mm. So mm. it was sort of out of... Boredom? Necessity? Boredom. But I, end of the day, like, I knew the, a lot of the guys before I even joined, and they were a lot, like, some of them are my best friends. Like I still talk to them to this day. So, I mean, it was just a little caveat that, yeah, we had to go through this whole thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm one of those guys. I'm, I'm a uh, frat douche That's canoe. Yeah. <laughs> what? It, it explains so much the quaffed hair. What was the worst thing you had to do as a pledge? Let's see. What's the statute of limitations on? Uh... <laughs> no, um, we played Edward 40 hands. That might be the worst thing oh, that, that. Uh, Go. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> cool. cool do I not know? Is this like a dude thing? No, it's you tape uh, forty ounces of beer. Yeah. With duct tape okay. to your hands, and you have to to drink them. Um, you can't go to the bathroom until you're done. Oh, that with, sounds yeah. like yeah, it's, just a, it's just a disaster. Yeah, it's a disaster if you like. Yeah, I've never done it. I've never done it. I've seen people do it. Right. And I've never, I've never gotten to that point where I think I can handle it. I guess. I was. So at once that you point. make it through the the beers, the beer. do you get to take them off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you either usually though your bladder's like knocking on the door before that happens. Right. Take right. Because it. it's eighty ounces of. Oh. You know, Miller High Life. Uh, oh. King or Cobra. King Cobra. And I guess it's not like you can like eat or mix it with mix in a water or two in there if you don't have. I think uh, I think I did get someone to feed me some water like while I was doing it because I was a little bit older. So like I was a, I knew what I was getting into with that. Like that was just drinking a couple of beers to me. Um, I've never heard of this. This is learn something new every day. I don't know if that was the worst, though. There were some no other things. That, no beer Olympics or anything? Oh, I mean, we did beer Olympics just for the hell of it. <laughs> for fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that wasn't even part of the pledge. Yeah, I was just like, we're playing beer <laughs> Olympics. It's a regular it's, weekend. It's Tuesday, you know? I mean, again, Western Carolina, there's not a lot to do. So we... Mountain people, scary yeah. mountain folk. What That's, school was this? Western Carolina University in Cullowee, North Carolina. Okay which is 45 minutes west of Asheville. Yep. Middle of nowhere. Great time, though. A lot of good camping. A lot I of really good like people. I like it's like the set for like a scary movie. It was. Have you ever seen Deliverance? <laughs> you think I'm kidding. The town at the end of Deliverance was Silva, North Carolina. Terrible. <laughs> so the dueling banjos was... Actually, I think that kid, the kid that played the banjo in mm -hmm. Deliverance was from Maggie Valley, North Carolina, or just Crazy. across the border in Tennessee, one of the two. Um, How do you know this kind of stuff? Random, useless knowledge. That's my thing. Chuck's full of it. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 pull my weight, I pull my weight in the random, useless knowledge department, too, I think. The Fugitive was filmed up there as well. Oh, oh, that's a great movie. The train wreckage from The Fugitive is still there, and you can go oh. visit it. Really? Yeah. Yep. Huh. I mean, again, we would go find stuff like this in college. Um, they found Eric Rudolph in like a couple of towns over the Olympic uh, Park bombing guy from 96. They found him. He had been hiding out around Western. So bored on a Sunday, we went and looked at the dumpster where they found him. That's just what you do out there. <laughs> <laughs> that and murder people. Like I said, it's like feels like a scary movie should be based there. Eh, yeah. I mean, that, that's accurate. It's that accurate. was my college experience. <laughs> <laughs> my, my college experiment, experience was uh, college experiments. There we go. Um, 
experience was drinking and uh, murder. That was that was it, you know. <laughs> cool. Yeah, cool. Cool story. How far is that from Bristol? No good Either, way. You have to go into Tennessee and go up 81 or go to Asheville, go 26 over to 81. Yeah, it takes a minute. But Western played at Bristol. I think they played ETSU. Oh, I forgot they were doing yeah. those football games there. A couple of years ago. Did they ago. do any of those last year? I don't think so. I think it was, was just like cool the first year they did it and then it was kind of like yeah 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 Tennessee and Virginia Tech was the big one yeah yeah I mean I think you got to wait like you can't do it all the time you got to do it every couple of years to really build up the hype otherwise it's just another football game in a big ass stadium did have you uh, checked out the new Tyler Childers album yet anybody I haven't I can't say I have uh, what well, let me ask you this Cole I was wondering this what type of music like are you into we know with like blaney and bubba they're into some like pretty heavy stuff but then they're also like you know into random stuff too so like what's your like go-to music i'm one of those people that can't really give you a good answer so <laughs> i kind of i kind of switch back and forth depending on my mood i guess yeah mostly between alternative and uh country those are pretty much my two. so if you had to like the whole like desert island thing if you had to pick three albums that you could take with you on a desert island. Could you pick those three? I don't really think about albums too much, honestly. Um, like, what but, kind of alternative groups do you listen to? Um, like, I, I listen to a lot of Weezer when they were like, I think their stuff like before they've kind of they've gone a little off track. I feel yeah. like, but I feel like their '90s, you know, when they were first getting going, they were pretty good. Um, even like Bush. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Bush is. <laughs> Radiohead. Um, Love Radiohead. I like Billy Currington. Uh, I can't remember. I don't. I don't know who else. I've listened to some Tyler Childers. You know. Yeah. He got some good stuff. I don't know. I don't know about the whole like bluegrass thing. I don't know if I can get <sighs> really into it, but that's okay. probably your deal. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's all you. It's Mountain the mountains, man. man. It's the mountains. <laughs> I, I think really... I. I think I prefer like bluegrass or like Americana or folk like over popular country i can't do popular country yeah it's it was good i mean i i don't know what it is about like the fiddle and the banjo to me that just it's fun it's good toe stomping music i just don't know enough about it i guess yeah, I don't yeah. Know who to get into like i, I don't yeah I feel like it can be cool i mean i mean playing a banjo i mean that's like the cool yeah thing. yeah I mean, you you could all you go back to Flat and Scruggs, Lester Flat, Earl Scruggs, uh, Doc Watson. Doc Watson's a good one to listen to. Like to, these are ones to get into. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Bill Monroe, um, Ralph Stanley. Like those are guys that would. They're the old standard. But then like Bela Fleck, uh, Bela Fleck and the Fleck Tones, because you get some good like psychedelic banjo with good Dude, bass playing. I feel like psychedelic banjo <laughs> sounds like an oxymoron. <laughs> It is and it isn't. It's great. Are you on psychedelics when you're playing the banjo? What's well, happening? So the thing, like, it's, it's music. So you're combining different styles, right? So you take that grunge rock from the 90s, that, you know, dirty bass sound, and then you throw on a banjo, boom, you've got, like, cool psychedelic -y, uh hmm. banjo music. Don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, you don't I'm, know. Yeah. Not knocking it, I am just can't really – Imagine it. It's a better combo than pimento cheese on a chicken biscuit. Anything is better than that? pimento cheese on a Not to me, chicken sandwich. What was the last – have you gone to any, like, shows? What was the last show you went to go see? Go, like, live show. Music. Live show. Uh, yeah. Other than at the track. I went to a Luke Bryan concert last year. Okay. Oh, he's a, he's a good entertainer. I, I've shockingly actually been to one of his concerts. It's been years, but – Mm -hmm. I like when he does covers. I don't know if he did covers at your at the concert you were at, but he did like covers of like rap song, songs. I think he did. I can't remember exactly. I remember yeah. he rode out on a four wheeler onto the stage, and I was like, "This is this is awesome." <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> he a good gentleman. When Kevin won his championship in fifteen, was it fifteen that he won? Yeah, he played in Vegas at the uh, um the Billy? after. Yeah, or is it? Yeah, that's what it's called, right? After party something. Yeah. Wait, that was Jake Owen. Sorry, that was not Luke Bryan. They all they Jake all Owen. run together. <laughs> <laughs> it's bro country. Good job. Yeah. Hey, you know, I'll take the L on that one. I wonder what is the current 
since we're headed to Vegas this weekend, what is the current odds? Well, I've been up, I've been up for a while, y'all. Uh, the <laughs> odds for Kevin to win the championship. I have no idea. Pretty good. Like, <laughs> odds are pretty good. I mean. Which doesn't really make it a great bet because. No. Your return is not going to be that big. You want, like, the 50 to 1 odds. You don't want the 13 to what 1 do you odds. Think, what do you think it is? Like, 2 to 1? I don't know about that good. I don't know. I mean, obviously, it's kind of a toss-up because it's, it's down to one race. I mean, I mean, Kevin's pretty good at Phoenix, though. Yes. So. Has he been good recently? I mean, I know it's, it's – it's what have you done for me lately? Yeah. And he, I mean, I think they ran pretty solid there in the spring, but um, – Let's see. Kes- didn't Keselowski win that race in the spring? I want to say it was Joey because Joey what won at the beginning of the year and then didn't really do anything until recently. Started to kind of show yeah. back up. Um, you know, the other thing that we haven't touched on at all that I feel like we would be remiss if we did not mention I it. And, and I like leaving it for late in the podcast so that way people actually have to listen to the whole thing to get to it. Mm-hmm. Um, the goat is coming to NASCAR. Michael Jordan. What are your thoughts on that, Cole? I know it, it's it's another competitor, it's another thing, but I mean, when you think about Michael Jordan being involved with our sport, how awesome is that? I mean, that, that's like the coolest thing in the world. I mean, I think I watched uh, I watched the documentary like a couple months ago on his you know basketball career and everything. The last that. dance. Last dance. And, like, I didn't really know much about him before that. You know, I knew he was, a, like, a great player, but I wasn't a huge basketball fan. But to watch that, like, that was, like, I became a huge Michael Jordan fan. So to be able to kind of, you know, see him in the sport now is pretty unreal. I guess I didn't realize he was a NASCAR fan. Like, he talked about, mm-hmm. like, going to races with his family growing up. Like, I didn't realize that. I will say I think it's good for the sport because – it'll bring more eyes on the sport. Like maybe like Michael Jordan fans who weren't NASCAR fans will be like, Oh, you know, my favorite basketball player has a team now, but I don't know that people who aren't familiar with the sport are going to be realistic in terms of how long it usually takes to be successful for like a first team. Like I say, I feel like because he's the goat in basketball, people are going to, although the, the uh, Hornets haven't won a championship. Uh, I just feel like people are going to expect them to win. And it might not happen the first year. No, I mean, I don't know if they're going to win the first year. But I, yeah. think, I think they're going to be a solid team from, you know, obviously there's a lot more unanswered questions about what's all going to take place with the team and how they're going to, where they're going to get the cars and how it's all going to work. But um, I think, I think they know enough and Denny probably knows enough to, they want to be a competitive team and they know where to get competitive stuff. Yeah. Well, and I also think like, you take 21 to kind of get on your feet and all that with the organizational type stuff. And then you've got, Mm -hmm. you spend that whole year planning for the next gen car. Cause I think that can probably be a little bit of a equalizer when that car hits the track. So if you're planning for that, I think this is perfect timing. I think the stars aligned and everything kind of, they'll figure out a lot of that, the hiccupy stuff. And then, Boom! When you get next gen, maybe they're they're firing on all all cylinders. I am excited to see who ends up being some of their sponsors because I feel like Jordan attracts a lot of different types of companies that we probably haven't seen in NASCAR. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I mean it's good for the sport. I mean overall, any way you look at it, I yeah. in my opinion, I mean. Fresh ownership. More more competitive cars, having an iconic figure like that. I mean, probably going to bring more sponsors in. I mean, just more eyes on the sport. I don't see how there's any negative to it. (laughs) Everybody everybody has asked, will it be car 23? That's literally the question that's like breaking the internet about this. I would hope so. I'm just, I'm looking forward to like hearing about the, the, the owner's meetings with him, Brad Doherty. Like, I think somebody tweeted, like, there needs to be, like, an owner's pickup basketball league now. Yeah. <laughs> like, you coach. <laughs> throw coach in there. Well, could, all right. Could you see your, your, uh, your boss, uh, Tony, playing basketball against uh, those guys? Oh, I, don't, I haven't seen Tony. 
I haven't seen him in an athletic state. Honestly, <laughs> I, I can't judge. I don't know how it would be. Um, I don't feel like, he's a lefty. I didn't know yeah. that. So, oh. um, so I don't know. Maybe he's athletic. I, I, I can't tell you. I'm trying to even picture Tony in like a basketball jersey, and I can't. I feel like it would be like um, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character in Along Came Polly when they're playing that pickup game. Print drops. <laughs> My mental image is. <laughs> he's like missing it. <laughs> awesome. Just bounces off the yeah. yeah. Well, it, it'd be like if you could get Brendan gone into ownership and have him out there too, which he would be he sneaky. Was a baller though. Yeah. Yeah. He would be sneaky. Uh, like right now you look at Brendan gone. You're like, there's no way he played basketball, but no. Yeah. He'll probably drop back and uh, drop a three on you. I mean, you'd have to like put Michael Jordan, Brad, Brad Doria on like on a handicap or something. <laughs> I mean, like, I, something. Well, spot you 60 points. It does. It would not be fair whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Glenn, it must be like the old guy versus the new blood because you'd have, like, if we're talking owners, like Penske, Hendrick, Gibbs. <laughs> Fair. I mean, Roush. Roush. Oh, geez. <laughs> who gets, you know, like your younger like brothers? Like a, like a colleague. Like, who gets uh, Matt Colleague on their team? Like, he seems younger. That's true. Yeah. I, that's the other good thing is we need some younger owners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with our older owners, you know. But Not that there uh, isn't. New, no. fresh blood in the sport's always good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. It I, won't be hard to see on pit road, though, like if he comes to races. Like amongst – once we get people back and once like pre-race and the grid is kind of back to craziness like it usually has been. Does so- he <laughs> – you're going to see him above everybody. He's going to just be above everybody. I don't think we're a predominantly tall sport. So we like... are not. <laughs> it's like, I mean, Brad Doherty is pretty tall, too, and you can see him when he's walking around. You can – he's, like, head and shoulders above the rest of uh, the crowd. So you'd always know, like, if you're dri- – like, if Bubba gets off the truck, it's, say, like a Daytona or somewhere, and he's looking for where his car is – just look for the really tall dude. The boom, yep. there's my car. You'll always find it. <laughs> always. Have you ever gotten lost on uh, pit road trying to find your car? Like when there's a throng of people there? No, no, I've, I've never had that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I guess I've always kind of scoped it out. <laughs> <laughs> like do a little reconnaissance. Okay, I'm here. I need to walk to here. Then to hey, here. Don't, you can't make look, make yeah. yourself look like an idiot. Yeah, Porta John's over here. Cars here. I know the distance and the route. It's in the PR uh, sheet that, that NASCAR sends out. This is where you need to go. Bathrooms here, cars here. Yeah. Where's your car? <laughs> um, so we're heading to Vegas this weekend. Uh, thoughts on Vegas? Thoughts on the, the you know, the, the, well, hell, the rest of silly season. We got other shoes that are going to drop. Um, Ooh, yeah. Like, now it's like, who goes to the 43? Who goes to the 48? We're – Seven we weeks out from wrapping up the point. season, there's so many questions still left. Yeah, I mean, obviously that 42 ride. I mean, Ross Chastain going in that thing. I mean, I mean, obviously more than deserving. I feel yeah. like. I mean, obviously he's proven he can do it. But I was actually kind of shocked. I mean, at the same time, I mean, I thought it was you know, you know, Bubba out there, and I, I didn't. You know, it's hard to say. Even there's so many players, it's hard to say who's going where. Yeah, yeah. The 42 was like kind of like I don't. I I feel like. Ross had been on my radar for the 42, like, before, but then I kind of just forgot. And there were so many other moving parts and people who need rides that I kind of not forgot about him, but he wasn't top of mind. Yeah, it's just there's so much going on, like, day to day. It's like, a, like I, I didn't even expect that Michael Jordan, yeah. you know, announcement. I didn't even expect that. So it was – I mean, it's so day-to-day of how things change, it seems like. Well, I do know yesterday, like, we pulled, like, all right, here are the cars that have potential openings. Here's the drivers that need landing spots. So now we just have to – we pulled a bunch of B-roll, and it's like, all right, we're going to put this with like this. A puzzle. And, yeah. So <laughs> it's all going to happen. It'll be interesting. Never a dull moment in NASCAR, especially in the fall and in silly season. As we crank up the second round – of the playoffs at Las Vegas. I'm doing my transition to kind of like wine. And now down. all of the series are in playoff mode. Yes. Thank God. It's always so hard to keep track of like, 
Well, the Cup Series is starting their playoffs, but the trucks are in their final race, but the Xfinity still have two races left before they start the playoffs. I'm like, what? <laughs> they shouldn't start on one week. I know. That, that would be cool if they could. So Eventually. <laughs> when we condense we'll the season down to – that'll be the 2023 schedule. <laughs> Maybe. Shouldn't the schedule be coming out soon? I mean, you got to think that the schedule is coming at some point, but I also have a feeling that NASCAR probably got word that the silly season stuff was happening, and it's like, well, maybe we just uh, hang on to the, let's <laughs> hang on to the schedule for a little bit, and because there was was it? Did I see something get leaked somewhere or tweeted somewhere? Like oh, the I thought the Athletic had something about Texas. I don't know, um, unverified by me and i shouldn't have brought it up for what all-star race oh i thought you were gonna say we were racing at coda i was like sign me up <laughs> <laughs> i mean i feel like i might have seen that too but that, that, would could be also, amazing. that could also be just wild speculation and i'm creating rumors and that's how rumors got started like Good did job, you know Scott. i'm pregnant we are no authority on anything on this podcast <laughs> yeah everything's on the table yeah, oh, the, but we didn't – well, not that this is on the list. Did you see where um, IndyCar is racing in Nashville and part of the race is over a bridge? It's the road course in Nashville. Yeah. That's it's crazy. It's like a road course in Nashville. It's going to be like a street course. Yeah. We're on a street course in Nashville? Yeah. 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 The going to go over a bridge, which is effing cool. Sounds it's, dangerous. It, it, it could be, but it's that bridge – so when we were down there last year for Champions Week, the stadium uh, where the Titans play is across yeah. the river from downtown, and it goes across the bridge to get to that, the Cumberland River, and then into the parking lot and does some stuff in the parking lot outside the stadium. So there's – I wonder if we're going to be racing in Nashville, like we've said, and they're racing in Nashville. Have The, date, the dates haven't been released for either of those, have they? I don't know. If they coincide and it's a doubleheader weekend. Because that would be awesome. Jimmy did tweet that he's adding that race to his Yeah, uh, I did see that. Of, he said something yeah. about it. It was going to be 12 and now it's 13 or something. The, according to The Athletic, the NASCAR Cup Series will compete at the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Austin and Texas 2021. And the All-Star Race is moving to Texas Motor Speedway. Wait, That's who, according wait, to The wait, Athletic. Athletic said the Cup Series is racing at Coda? Yeah. Man, that's going to be crazy. That's Send cool. me on that trip. I love Austin. <laughs> NASCAR is not confirmed, and uh, the Circuit of the Americas CEO has declined to comment. So that is purely hearsay. Purely hearsay. I have to say that probably legally, or else I have to cut this out of the podcast. But what would you – all right, race Nakoda. What would that be like? I mean, you've got the F1 guys uh, that you could ask some uh, advice there at Haas. Uh, you know yeah I, mean, I honestly have no idea <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean i've watched the races there a little bit but it's uh i don't know it sounds like the facility is like awesome so that would yeah. be probably really cool um and then also i mean i think the track i mean it's new pavement but i have no idea if it's wore out or not or it'll be a lot it'll be different i mean it'll be some chaos obviously road courses are always chaotic so it's uh there's like a lot of undulation too like i don't know I watched a MotoGP race there. I feel like yeah. I'd be curious okay. to know the elevation change relative to like Sonoma or Watkins Glen because it feels bigger there, but mm -hmm. it could not be. Oh, I think it'll be a cool race. I mean, why not try it out? I mean, it's a cool road course. Yes. I think the thing, the one thing that I've learned this year, and I mean, I've known it before. I've said it on the podcast before. I think we should move the all-star race around. I think that's a good thing to do. You mix mm -hmm. it up. That's what, every other sport does with their all-star event. Yeah. Um, I, I think that would be good. And I think that change to the schedule, like you saw it with auto club going to a short track. Like, I think that these things are good and let's try them out. See what happens. It's fun. Change is good. I love change. Speaking of loving change and all of that, I'm going to pretend to hit the button on the music to play the song to cue us out. Uh, but I don't have my soundboard with me because I'm in the office. So I do have my cardboard cut out That's with my squirrel crazy. costume on. So crazy. Um, not just in a random gray cell of emotion. Yeah, uh, I wondered where you were. I was like, what is happening? Yeah. I had to pull a few things to liven it up a little bit. Otherwise it was just like flat gray. So 
Um, final thoughts, Cole Custer, uh, on your second run in the glass case of emotion uh, seat. Oh, this was this was amazing. I mean, I, I can't thank you guys enough for having me on. I mean, this was uh, learned a lot of new things. I mean, about Cracker Barrel, Mento Cheese. Um, there's a number of things that I would have not learned today if not for this podcast. <laughs> That's you know, we learned a little bit, we laughed a little bit. We grew as people a little bit today. You know, and that's all you can ask for in a podcast, I think. Thank you. So, <laughs> well, Cole, thank you so much for joining us. Um, good luck this weekend at Vegas and the rest of the season if we don't talk to you. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, fans, don't forget to rate and review in iTunes. Subscribe on YouTube. Like and uh, all that stuff everywhere. Go find this podcast wherever you find podcasts and all of that. And, uh go join the facebook group again yeah the glass case of emotion facebook group it's a group under the nascar thing on facebook so join it it's a whole social dilemma thing do it do it now kim we are the champions (laughs) we're gonna end it on that we're the champions